what can you expect during this massive once in a lifetime transit of Pluto into Aquarius? Stay tuned to find out. Hey, dreamy dreamers. Welcome back to the crazy dreamer network. My name is AJ and let's hop right into this special one of a kind reading on this Pluto in Aquarius transit. Now, if you'd like to hear more about this, stay tuned. If not, you can skip this part and go straight to your timestamp down in the description box down below. Okay. So just off of my research and a little bit of knowledge of astrology, this is a massive transit happening in the sign of Aquarius and uh, the planet Pluto, right? So Aquarius is all about humanitarianism, community, you know, uh, fighting for the rights of others. And it's also in tarot, the water bearer, right? So the healer. And so with it transiting into the sign of, into the, with Pluto transiting into this sign, right? Which Pluto is the planet of death, of rebirth, of destruction, right? Think of the death card. Um, think of Scorpio energy. There's going to be a lot of transformations, dare I say, and a lot of awakenings happening, a lot of epiphanies, a lot of um, not only astrological, but also... Um, technological advancements being had here during the next 20 years because the transit of Pluto will be happening in Aquarius starting on the 20th, if I believe. Don't quote me on the dates, guys. But it will be retrograding back into Capricorn, I believe, during September. And then it will once and for all go back in to the sign of Aquarius for the next 20 years until which it goes into Pisces. Okay. So this is going to be a big reading. This is going to be a probably a longer reading, a more extensive reading. So again, I hope you guys kind of got the gist of it. Definitely do your own due diligence. I will list videos and references in the description box down below, just to give you guys more education and insight into this large, very hefty transit. Okay. So again, we have our pile number ones, Pile number twos and pile number threes. Pile number one, we have this beautiful labradorite crystal heart with card six, Saturn truth. Pile number twos, we have this beautiful green agate crystal with card number 46, grand trine blessings. In pile number three, we have this Verisite crystal with card number 52, Void, of course, missing. Okay, so I'll give you all some time to meditate on your pile selection. All right, Dreamy Dreamers, again, pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in your reading. Bye. Hey, pile number one. So you all chose this gorgeous Lapidorite crystal heart as your pile selection crystal alongside card six with Saturn truth. So what you can expect during this Pluto transit in the sign of Aquarius is a lot of truth, is a lot of you bringing forth your truth. And this could be in relation to your psychic abilities or your spiritual um, gifts, right? Especially with the Labradorite crystal here. You might hold these spiritual gifts very close to the chest, close to your heart. And I feel like you're going to start bringing them more into the forefront because they're simply your truths, right? This is your truth. This is who you are. This is what you're interested in this is who you uh plan on being right also i think it's very interesting because pluto is currently in the sign of capricorn which is ruled by saturn and um it's coming out of the sign of capricorn into aquarius on the 20th of january and it will go back for a retrograde period during September. Don't quote me on those dates. You guys look them up for yourselves. I'll try to put some uh, resources and uh, other videos in the description box down below underneath your pile selection. But um, 
after that retrograde period ends from September to November, it will be going back basically for a 20 year stint um, by the end of November or by the end of this year. OK, so I think there will be a lot of confronting of truths, a lot of confronting of spiritual truths as well, especially with that labradorite crystal energy and a lot of psychic truths. I feel like. I feel like pile number ones, a lot of you all will be vindicated by what you've told people in the past, by the things that you've shared with people. And maybe, you know, because you have been so ahead of your time, because your spiritual gifts have preceded you, um, you know, you might find that a lot of people might come back to you and be like, hey, this was completely accurate. The things that you've said, the things that you've warned me about, the things that you've told me maybe were going to happen and I didn't believe it at the time, but it ended up happening. Or the way in which you explained something was exactly to the T what it actually was, right? There's going to be a lot of vindication here, a lot of vindication of your hard work. And I feel like you've had to learn hard lessons like, well, damn, who do I confide in? Who can I talk to about these things when, you know, they might seem outlandish or like, how the hell do you know that? But it's because, you know, you have that Saturn energy. And I think it's very fascinating as well, pile number ones, because Aquarius rules truth, right? Aquarius's affirmation ultimately is I know, right? <laughs> they don't know how they know. They just know. So I feel like a lot of you all will be vindicated in um, your spiritual journey, your spiritual progress and process, and even uh, the uncanny ways in which you know certain things psychically without, you know, maybe even you knowing how you know or why you know, okay? So we're going to put your crystal right over here. I'm going to center this a bit. And now let's get into the Wild Unknown Alchemy deck by Kim Kranz. We're going to put this back in here just because we haven't set our intentions yet with these cards. But let's proceed. I have cleansed this deck off camera. So, yeah, let's get into it. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for blessing and protecting um, the people in pile number ones, for giving us clear concise accurate insights into what they can expect okay what is uh what will this transit what will this pluto and aquarius transit bring into the lives of our pile number one spirit clear concise accurate messages what will this pluto and aquarius transit bring into the lives of our pile number ones clear concise accurate messages thank you Thank you. Tell us more, Spirit. One more card. Okay. Well, Spirit wanted to give us a lot of cards, so we're going to take them, okay? Very interesting. Okay, we'll get to the bottom of the deck in a minute, but let's see. Our first three cards out here, we'll start with the one at the top. We have Revis with the androgen, okay? So this represents duality, and I think it's funny because during the pre-shuffle off camera, and you guys know I do that just for brevity's sake so I can give you your full reading in, you know, one take, and it's not too long and drawn out. But the first, uh, the card that popped out when I was cleansing the tarot deck that we're going to use today was the two of the two of pentacles, the two of coins. And I ultimately thought duality, 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 duality. And with the Rebus, the androgynin, this is exactly what this card is suggesting, a duality, a dual nature, right? Being in one, being in unison, right? Even so much so that Piscean energy, that yin yang energy, okay? Um, we have these birds here, right? Which could be signify, which could signify messengers, right? We have this beautiful blue rose, the spider dangling from the web. We have these rainbows here, which always remind me of Aquarius. I don't know why rainbow energy reminds me of Aquarius, but it just does. And then we have the sun and the moon on the opposite sides of this blossoming blue rose. So what I'm getting is there's a lot of connection, not only to earth, not only to mother earth, not only to nature, but to every aspect of the dualism that earth and has right and in this card in the guidebook it talks about the artist it talks about the artist being a dual energy right being able to balance both worlds that gray area right that white 
which is masculine energy, that black, which is feminine energy. And then when they coincide that gray area that, you know, that people talk about ultimately. And so when it comes to this pile number um, ones, what spirit wants you to know how this Pluto and Aquarius transit will be impacting your life or will it will bring into your life is a lot of beauty, a lot of artistry and a lot of you kind of riding the wave of maybe just your intuition. Right. So next we have plum plumbum with lead. OK, very interesting. We'll get to that in a moment. And then we have Margarita Precosa with the new pearl. This is beautiful. I'm I hope you guys are with me and I hope you guys are following along and aren't too much in a rush. If you are, come back to this reading because this is going to be an important one. So I'm definitely going to get into that lead. What is the alchemist trying to turn lead, it, lead, which is base metals into gold? That's the whole point of alchemy as we know it. Right. Ultimately, in its modern interpretation, we know that it's kind of like um what is it called? It's kind of like an analogy of turning a, a bad situation into a good situation, right? But back in the day, they were literally trying to turn base metals, lead into gold. So I feel like, and, and it's funny because there's this gold um, triangle and circle around this pearl. And it's almost like you're doing the impossible. You are doing that pile number ones because you have honed into the truth all along. Everyone else is catching up to that. You know what I'm saying? So before I even go into these cards, I'm going to put them right above here because I'm trying to keep things organized. We're going to get into just a little bit of this lead energy. I don't really need to get to, into the androgen because I this card has come out a lot. <laughs> so I, I've, I've kind of understood. I'm kind of understanding it. It's about the artist's way, basically. Not really subscribing to any um, particular kind of like identity, but resting in that gray area, right? Which is the artist's way a lot of the time. But let's get into this lead energy. I'm very curious. And you remember the yin and the yang energy. We have the white, we have the black, we have the two converging, so to speak. So let's see. Destiny, weight, and Saturn. You can't make this shit up. See, I I'm sorry, guys, but this reading is about to, it's going to be a doozy. It literally says destiny, weight, and Saturn. I didn't even know that lead and Saturn went together. I had no idea. Like, I'm just getting into astrology more and more and more and fine tuning it. I'm interested in it and I love it. So, you know, I know a decent general amount but I'm just really dipping my toe into it. So we're already in perfect alignment with this reading. So let's proceed. I have to read <laughs> the whole thing because to me, this is a very weighty reading. So it says, lead is the first metal. Its properties are heavy, dense, and unwaveringly steady. It is often perceived as the metal that initiated the entire alchemical drive to turn what is base. I, so girl, I, I have just read, I have never read this card before. I just, I hope you guys know this. I hope you guys understand I'm telling you the honest to God truth. But I just know the story of lead, right? Anyone who has read the Alchemist book by Paulo Colette, pa Paolo Colette, Colejo or whatever, they know. So again, it says the entire alchemical drive to turn what is base, lead, into what is noble, gold. It correlates to the planet Saturn and its love of rules and structure. On one hand, this card implies a fixed position or burden that may be weighing down the work. On the other hand, lead can arrive just in time to ground a situation, to bring an alchemist back to the humble beginnings. Either way, the presence of lead is sobering. <laughs> we cannot ignore it. The impatient alchemist may be discouraged to see it in the laboratory as it reminds us of how far we have to go. Approach this card with reverence for the ongoing process. 
I basically gave you guys the disclaimer like, hey, I already know this is going to be a very thorough, in-depth reading. So like get what you need, water, snacks, coffee, tea, whatever you like and gather around because you're going to probably come back to this reading for quite some time. So um, it says lead was also known as a sleeping giant of alchemy. It is said to contain its own secret and solution. Ponder how you can awaken this intelligence. It says watch what other cards surround lead. That will indicate how mobile this metal is becoming or how much weight the current is carrying on their shoulders. Woo, pile number one. So you guys are you guys are lock and step, if that's even a word or phrase. I don't know. I'm just saying shit at this point. But you guys are right in step with your destiny. You guys are right in step. You guys have been right all along. I'm sorry. But you guys could really be like, yep, I told you. And people couldn't say anything because they're like, well, they did. They did tell us, you know. So let's go now into the Margarita Prescotia. Prescotia. So let's see. The New Pearl. Boom. There we go. Okay. So let's see. <laughs> so the New Pearl would suggest grit, irritation, and waiting. Very interesting. The New Pearl is one of the greatest, is one of the great promises of alchemy. What did I say? Gold. That's, I want to stop this reading, but I'm not. Let me hurry up and stop being dramatic which i'm actually not being dramatic it's just it's uncanny the the synchronicities already in this reading the new pearl is one of the great promises of alchemy from a single grain of sand the pearl forms slowly but surely in the salt mouth of the oyster the new pearl emerges as an alchemical miracle a sight unimaginable at the outset that said the process is generated from irritation itself you guys are irritated at people a lot of this time because they just didn't get you they you were so many steps ahead they they couldn't see it but you guys could and you stood the course and now you're about to be vindicated for what you have kind of like tried to preempt people or show people or tell people what the hell was going on and they're gonna see right they have to just you know some people have to learn from themselves for themselves right go through it so it says, from irritation itself, such is the medicine of the new pearl card. The work is underway, but the gem has not yet formed. Don't become petty and hasty. Okay, see, look. <laughs> Don't become petty and hasty, seeking a return on your efforts. Rather, turn to patience, consistency, and humility to remedy the discomfort. Let the magic of time and salt water do its work. Relax, believe, and support a fellow alchemist in finding the grit that will become their pearl. Don't worry about you now. Don't worry about you right now. The entire ocean is your ally. And you know why the entire ocean is your ally, pile number ones, is because you guys are in lockstep and key with the truth, with your truth. And I feel like your truth is truth in and of itself. And understanding that process through trusting in yourself. And spirit wants to um, congratulate you for that and wants to commend you for that because Saturn as a planet does celebrate. It celebrates hard work. It celebrates due diligence. It celebrates you having grits, right? Uh, it says, take note if this card appears with the Y salt card or any of the cards associated with the element of water. Let them amplify the message of the new pearl. It says the pearl is made from only one grain of sand, one irritant. Take a moment to thank this irritant for being so consistently challenging, allowing the new pearl to begin its formation. One grain of a mustard seed. That's all you need. OK, they say that in the Bible in relation to faith. One the, the size of a mustard seed and mustard seeds are very small. That's all you need in relation to faith in order to make something happen, in order to turn this lead into gold as long as you stay persistent, right? So that's what spirit also wants you to know, pile number um, ones, is just keep going. Like you're so right and you're headed in the right direction. Don't let minor irritants or... Um, anything like that, let it condition you, right? Let it, let it smooth you out, right? Let it, um, turn you into this pearl. 
Okay, so we have the yellowing. Interesting. And this is a card about kind of like decay, death, right? When a banana yellows, the, yellow, the more yellow it gets, turns into brown, and then it kind of, you know, it, it erodes, I guess. And then we have the wise salt, and they talked about the new pearl in the wise salt. You're being conditioned right now, or you have been conditioned. I feel like the conditioning part is over. I feel like a lot of you guys are really going to have your time in the sun. Like, your I told you so moments, <laughs> pile number um, pile number ones. I feel like a lot of you all should be checking your placements when it comes to where your Pluto is, okay? How much Aquarius you have in your chart, maybe even how much Scorpio you have in your chart because this is a Pluto, um, this is a Pluto into Aquarius return, right? And then also, uh, what else? Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, so now we have the Y saw and the new pearl together. So they already talked about you guys um, really taking form right now is what you can expect. But I do want to read just the keywords of the Y salt. Wisdom, grit, and per preservation. Exactly. Grit, basically the same thing. And wisdom. Yeah. Yep. And then um, we have lightning at the bottom of this deck for you guys, too. Which, And we have the snake here, right, wrapped around this egg which could represent um, a lot of transformation, right? We were just talking about transformation and then also protecting something, maybe holding on too tight to, to the point where it cracks, but it's like you're trying to protect it, right? So this could be ego as well. I don't know why I'm just getting that, like trying to protect your ego. I know Aquarius, um, because it's such a, because it's an air sign and it could be kind of flighty, uh, although on first encounter with Aquarius you probably didn't think they have a lot of ego but I feel like Aquariuses do have a lot of ego especially because their affirmation is I know right like I know what's happening so if something was to counteract them knowing that could feel like a loss of identity or a lack thereof right and it's interesting because we have a pearl right here as well so Let's um, get into some tarot and get more details on what this Pluto in Aquarius transit is bringing into our pile number one's lives. What is this Pluto in Aquarius transit bringing into pile number one's lives, Spirit? Tell us more. Give us insight. Thank you. Beautiful. So we have the 10 of earth. We have the seven of earth, right? And these could even be reversed, but I feel like fruits of your labors are paying off, right? The things that you invested in are now coming into full fur fur fruition. fruition? <laughs> you know what? Let's put these down here just for the meantime. You guys can see, I believe. So let's get into it. Tell us more, Spirit. Give us more insight and depth in this reading on what Pluto and Aquarius is bringing into our pile number one's lives. I feel like a lot of color, too, a lot of joy, but let's see. Interesting. We have the sovereignty of water, which is the king of cups. A lot of emotional grounding, emotional um, intelligence as well. We also have the generosity of earth, which is the queen of pentacles. And I feel like with the generosity of earth, um, there's going to be a lot of abundance. A lot of you all might be really doubling down and focusing on your material world, ironically enough, right? And I feel like that's one way you guys will be rewarded if you stay diligent on your financial path for some reason, for some reason is what I'm getting. There's going to be a lot of material, um, 
goods brought into your life, a lot of things materializing into your life, right? You guys could, there could be like, you guys could be getting pets, animals, dogs, something like that. Um, you guys could be very wealthy, something you could capitalize off of. And this could be your truth. This could be your divine insight. This could be what you do, you know, your spirituality and you really honing into your spirituality and you really doubling down on what you know is your truth. And a lot of other people's truths are maybe similar, right? Come on. We have the will. We have the will. Lead talks about destiny. You know, you're, it's almost like destiny is intersecting. You're at the right place in the right time, right? Because we talk about lady luck, right? Destiny, the will of fortune. You're very lucky, right? And I feel like spirit wants you to know that and like, um, is really kind of like giving you your flowers early in advance, right? In advance because of You've invested in something and you you're hitting the jackpot, the proverbial jackpot. And this could just be the jackpot of you being at the right place at the right time. You doubling down on something that you knew to be true for you, pile number ones, and you ultimately being rewarded because the people can't deny what's real because they feel it too, right? So we have the five of water and I feel like the, you there's been so many times where you felt like, damn, I'm just misunderstood. People don't really understand where I'm coming from. Like, is this ever going to take off? Is like, you know, am I just like spinning my wheels here? Right. Um, and will I ever, you know, reach success, reach the fruits of my labors. And I feel like you're leaving that. That's what's, transforming right you're transforming from the five of cups energy that five of water energy that morning energy right into uh, a new day a new time right maybe you've been praying to be in alignment with um your goals your dreams your ambition right and there could still be some more refinement to do as well we have the ace of earth the things that you have planted are materializing period they're materializing and I feel like, come on, the Ace of Earth, we have one, two, three, four Earth cards. Some of you all might be Earth signs, um, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, or you could have those, you could have those signs, excuse me, highly aspected in your chart, but others, you have just been on the money. You have been on the ball and you are materializing everything that you're saying, everything that you have planted right all of your dreams all of your hopes all of your affirmations they're now going to materialize and now you're leaving this five of water energy this five of cups energy behind you this despair this sadness this crying over spilled milk uh maybe old friendships that just did not pan out because you guys were no longer aligned or you guys have grown out of each other right and then you're allowing new relationships new partnerships new collaborations to spring forth and we have the four of water right and i feel like maybe you've meditated on this in some way shape or form right um also what i get with this card this is like my once in a blue moon card in this deck just because how big and bright that blue moon is uh behind this woman on this card and i just feel like you know Maybe you've been waiting, right? Well, I think the new pearl talked about waiting. And in the traditional right away tarot cards, actually, even in this one, this lady is sitting on a hill, waiting, twiddling her thumbs, waiting for something to come forth, right? She's bored. And I feel like when it comes to you, pile number ones, you all have been so innovative. You all have been such forward thinkers. Maybe you, you tend to get bored in life quickly because you're like, I, I've i seen it. It's been in my head. I've already conceptualized it. I've seen this happening. I've seen this coming into fruition. I'm waiting for everyone else to catch up. You know, that's just what I'm getting here, my dears. Okay, so let's see. Let's get, um, let's get some more cards. We're going to use the Oracle of the Universe deck. 
Tell us more, spirit. Tell us more. Any other detailed insights you want to give to our pile number one as to what this Pluto and Aquarius energy is bringing into their lives, spirit? It's okay, that was quick. <laughs> Card number 35, the nebula butterfly with twin jet change, okay? Change, the utmost change for the better. You've done it. You've waited. You've grounded yourself. You've waited to high heavens, pile number ones, for your ships to come in. Here they are. You've planted the seeds. You've invested. You've toiled the ground, right? You've uh, brought something to full fulfillment, and now you will be enjoying the fruits of your labor. It's almost like you'll have everything uh, humanly possible that the material world has to offer you. And because you've been so diligently waiting and participating, this is being made available. Now, one thing I don't want you guys to do is to just wait for this opportunity. Stay in movement, stay in motion, keep... Um, going forward right because because sometimes we can become complacent when it feels like we have everything in the world we have everything right but don't become complacent you are a once in a blue moon just how this occurrence is in the astrology okay so i do want you guys to know like sometimes when we have everything right when we have everything available to us sometimes you know we end up like you know the buddha and back into our spirituality. So I'd rather you guys do that than to kind of just sit and be sad or, you know, complacent, right? Because with the Four of Cups, that's what this could be signifying. Also, I'm getting Cancerian energy, so mother energy, maybe the fourth house energy as well, okay? And let's see. Bottom of the deck, yep, card number 21, Constellation. Eridanus with confidence. Continue to have confidence in yourself because you have built this confidence up. At least you should. You're about to have a lot of confidence spring up. You're about to go run forth in the blaze of glory because all this truth that you, people are going to come to you and be like, oh my gosh, you said this. You said this. Pile number ones, you guys said this. Okay. You said it a long time ago and it happened. And I'm getting the chariot energy here. So some of you all could be Cancerians, uh, cancer energy. Some of you all could have uh, cancer in the South Node. Maybe that's what you're leaving behind as well. But also um, there could be fourth house energy coming in. So some of you all, when I'm getting the fourth house energy is some of you all, this could be about home life, right? This could be about, you know, material, home life. So that's also what I'm getting here. Be confident about, you know, this new change. You've earned it. You deserve it. Okay. So yes, pile number ones. We're not going to end just yet. I told you guys this was an in-depth reading. Let's get some charms to end your reading. Last messages for our pile number one spirit to end their readings. So this is back here. Oh my goodness. I think this is the first time I ever got, I wonder what this means, ever got this card. It's like a piece of a coin. Well, we know it's money. So you, a lot of you guys might have some money coming and there's a piece cut out of this coin. And I think this is, is this a quarter? No, no, no. It's not a quarter. It's like a 51. Is it a dime? It says one United States of America denomination. It's not a dime. It, it says 1936. That's the uh, date on it. In God we trust liberty. So this could be like a half dollar or something like that. We have the elephant. Some of y'all's like you've been seeing a lot of elephants, a lot of spirit animals. Elephants represent wisdom. So a lot of wisdom has taken place over the course of um, this happening. And then we also have like this Queen Elizabeth. A lot of you all could be royalty. Look at this. Hold on. 
we have the crown here and then we have like i think this is like a head of queen elizabeth or something so you guys you know that crown chakra energy that royalty that royal you you guys are seeing your divinity and your royalness we have these two hearts again you guys could be falling in love or really developing a particular relationship we have this star here you guys are stars and this also has like a religious or spiritual significance to it. We have the infinity symbol, okay? Forever and ever, infinite. We are in the year of eight. So this could be where all this abundance is coming from, right? And then we have this beautiful declaration of like, hold on, I don't know what this is. It's like a cross with wings on it. It's like a totem or something like that. I'm getting spiritual protection. But yeah, pile number um, ones, I, I see abundance. I see you're getting a piece of your pie. Maybe this is what that means, like a piece of your pie, a piece of your abundance is coming forth um, during this Pluto and Aquarius. And um, love, connection, the royal you, right? Let's end this reading. We're going to just, we got to roll the astro dice. Come on, we're doing an astrology pick a card reading. So last, very last messages for our pile number ones about this Pluto and Aquarius transit. What is it bringing forth in their life? Give us last final details for our pile number ones during this Pluto and Aquarius transit spirit. Eighth house, come on. South node, what did I say? And then we have Capricorn. Okay. So I feel like the eighth house is all about endings and beginnings, right? You leaving behind the things that no longer serve you with this South Node energy. I was, some of you all's uh, South Node may be in Cancer or it could be in Capricorn or vice versa. Whatever. It could be in any sign, really. But this Capricorn energy is interesting because I think I just pointed out in the beginning of this reading, that's what Pluto is leaving, is Capricorn. So to be honest, with the eighth house, I feel like, yeah, you guys are just going through a deep metamorphosis in regards to maybe power structures, uh, antiquated ways of obtaining power, right? Maybe just through status games, status symbols, stuff like that. Uh, there's going to be a more grounded, down-to-earth, ironically enough, uh, way of achieving your dreams and, and really living out loud and helping people in the process, okay? So, yeah, pile number ones. That was a deep, beautiful reading. That's about all the time that I have for you, my dreamy dreamers. I love you all so much. I really hope this reading resonated. I felt like it was a fantastic reading with a lot of um, twist and turn. So, if you all enjoyed this reading please hit that thumbs up button like share and subscribe share this content with loved ones family friends or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today if y'all are interested in a gorgeous one-of-a-kind tarot journal look no further the link to that journal will be in the description box down below you can use it on these readings take notes you could use it on this astrological transit this major pluto and aquarius transit that's happening on january 20th if you guys have like Amazon Prime. Um, but again, the link to the journal will be in the description box down below. Also, if you if you guys are interested in turning your talents, your gifts right into a spiritually based business, look no further. Go to my website, www.crazydreamer.com. It will be in the description box down below and book a consultation call with me. I monetize my YouTube channel in literally six weeks and I can help you do the same thing. Okay. So go down to my description box and uh, go to my website and check me out. Or if you just want to say hi or, you know, get some advice, let me know. Love you guys. Bye. Hey, pile number twos. Welcome back to your reading. So you all chose this really deep green agate crystal as your crystal selection alongside with card number 46 with the grand trine blessings. Okay. So, Y'all are blessed, okay? That's what it, uh, this Pluto in Aquarius 
energy will be bringing into your lives. Nonetheless, a lot of abundance, a lot of wealth, a lot of health, a lot of prosperity, right? Maybe some of you all have been asking for just that, right? It's interesting too, because we have card number 46, four plus six, that's 10, one plus zero, that's one. So there's going to be a, a lot of new beginnings happening into your life as well, pile number twos. Um, I also did want to read a little bit uh, about this green agate, which is a really amazing grounding stone. It's really good for wealth. And then it's also good for the heart chakra and decision making, right? So I feel like you guys will be more decisive come this uh, Pluto and Aquarius transit, okay? I feel like uh, with the Pluto and Aquarius, a lot of old things will be falling to the wayside, whereas like transmutations of like your energy, maybe in the past you guys were indecisive, not the best decision makers at all, but you have learned to grow into being a decisive person and really taking decisive action. And this does well with wealth, okay? So being a decisive person, taking making those executive decisions quote unquote it, it coincides with wealth you can't really be a wealthy person without doing those type of things right because that's what bosses do so without further delay let's delve deeper into these messages on what this pluto and aquarius transit will be bringing into your life pile number twos tell us more spirit <laughs> okay i kind of want to take this card because i want it to come out tell us more clear concise accurate messages for our pile number twos what will this pluto and aquarius transit be bringing into our pile number twos lives we're going to take these because i told you guys buckle up it's probably going to be a longer reading um and with that being said you know I want you guys to get comfortable. So let's see. This was the first card out. So let's see. This is resin. Very interesting. So we have resin here. And I know resin is good for artists, right? You know, when we use resin, we tend to want to encapsulate something um, as it was. Like, keep so, how can you put it? Like, almost like time capsule it, right? Um, make it pause or freeze at the time in which you currently are so let's see we also have antimony we have this white wolf here we have sugar beautiful we get all these sugar crystals and it looks really fun we have the uncreated or incretum the uncreated excuse me <laughs> and then we have the Rosa Aureum with the Golden Rose. Very beautiful energy pile number um, pile number twos. Okay, I do want to show you guys very quickly the bottom of the deck here. And we have the Floss Sapien Sapientum with the red and white rose. Okay, so I feel like there could be this kundalini energy here that's coming out. I don't did this come out in the previous reading, guys? And I feel like in the same um in pile number twos as well. So this is a collective energy that's going around, right? So again, there's this kundalini energy that's happening. There's something that's kind of like tightening around your purity, around your innocence, right? That's tainting it a little but not in a bad way in like a real life way in like an experiential way right so now with resin i feel like spirit wants you to have fun with your art right and i feel like maybe even during this time right because like i was if you guys haven't seen the intro i would suggest you go back and kind of get like a small little briefing of uh, what this pluto and aquarius kind of means in its generalities but more specifically with you pile number twos i feel like spirit really wants you to come out of your shell really wants you to be that artist that you want to be right because we have in creatum with the uncreated so like there's something there's some art there's something that needs to be shown from you that you've actually been wanting to show but you maybe haven't had the courage or the energy or whatever the the know-how or the wherewithal to show it i actually take that back i feel like you guys have the know-how 
it's just maybe you are a perfectionist. Maybe you've been waiting on divine timing or the right time to strike when there is no right time. And spirit really wants you to create, to produce, to bring something into fruition. And you will be very blessed because of this um, because of your artistry, because of your work, right? Now with saccharum, with sugar, I feel like um, maybe there's something very pleasant about you. There's something very beautiful about the experiences that only you can display to the world, right? Like, look at how beautiful this is. Very glittery. It's almost like a very starlit night or something like that. But in reality, it's sugar. Also, what I'm getting is give the people a little sugar, with their medicine, right? How, maybe your artistry will be so palatable to a lot of people that it makes you a very wealthy person because people can resonate with your art in ways in which you maybe didn't even realize. And with this resin, the things that you create will be encapsulated into the end of time, you know? And maybe that is, therein lies the fear. But with this Kundalini energy, right? with this almost like this uh, sacral chakra energy, this um, this uh, sexual energy here, spirit really wants you to birth something, bring something to life with the uncreated. Some of you all might be having children or something like that. I'm like, that could be a component, but you know, others want you to physically create your art, your artwork and not be afraid to do that or not be, you know, thinking like, oh, I have to wait to the right time. But I do want to read a little bit of antimony with Stebus with antimony. So just give me one second. I'm not going to delve too deep into this because I feel like the, you know, spirit just kind of gave us in a nutshell um, what the meanings behind these were. So let's see. Mm, sorry guys give me one second and also there's something very sweet about you pile number twos with sugar here there's some very sweet very innocent very pure about your energy and i feel like spirit just kind of wants you to how can i put it like doesn't want you to like i wanted to say like that's a great doesn't want you to do anything like that but wants you to kind of come out of your shell a little bit more want you to show like show the world what you are really made of like you don't have to be so nice or sweet all the time you can you know be you yeah it says stebus antimony wildness fierceness and hunger this is what i'm talking about spirit wants you to really come out your shell and be that white wolf show you know that that or a gray wolf show what you're really what's inside of you it says in medieval times antimony became known as a gray wolf of alchemy this was due to the metalloids unpredictable qualities and its ability to eat away at materials in the laboratory gold is one of the few materials to withstand contact with it for these reasons this card must be read with delicacy on one hand it represents the wild and free spirit that longs to express itself in the world on the other hand it represents a fierceness that can turn destructive or coercive at the drop of a hat the message is clear channel the gray wolf's energy towards creativity this is basically all they're trying to say is you have so much creative energy to give to the world go about doing that and i think you will and once you actually do this i feel like it'll bring a lot of blessings in your life it will attract beautiful things into your life that you maybe didn't even necessarily expect and a lot of wealth okay so let's see let's get more into the messages thank you god thank you spirit for blessing this deck for giving pile number twos clear concise accurate messages Give us more in-depth insight into what this Pluto and Aquarius transit is bringing into the lives of our pile number two spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages. What is this Pluto and Aquarius transit bringing into the lives of our pile number twos? Clear, concise, accurate messages. Okay. 
So we have the velocity of water, which is the Knight of Cups. So more creativity, right? Tell us more spirit. Oh, okay. We're going to take all these. We're taking all these cards. Okay. We have the moon. We have the star. Spirit wants you to show the world the, the star that you are, the star that spirit created you to be, right? We have the ten of earth, abundance. I love this. Things coming together, things materializing. We have the sovereignty of water, which is the king, king of cups. Balanced energy, a lot of um, emotional equilibrium, a lot of emotional intelligence, a lot of emotional growth. We have the nine of water. Okay, baby. The nine of cups here. Living large, living lavish. Okay. Having your ducks in a row, having, um, you know, your needs met and your wants met even more, right? Uh, having your wishes come true, having that palace that you've always wanted or desired or that mansion or that kingdom, whatever you're, you're bringing into fruition, your wishes being granted, pile number twos, those blessings coming in. We have the five of air. And we have the three of water, three of cups. Okay. So I feel like a lot of abundance is coming in. Like we would suggest, Ugh, I don't know why I'm so sorry, guys. This um, camera looks so crooked. Okay. It still looks crooked. It's all heck. Let me fix this because I can't stand it. Oh, gosh. See, and then if I straighten it like that, then that's crooked. Okay, so that's good. We're, we're just going to leave it like that. So again, pile number twos. With the velocity of water, that means, like, I feel like your creative juices will be flowing during this Pluto in the sign of Aquarius, right? Once this transit occurs and you're going to see an influx of this happening uh, for the next, what, till September, right? And then it will be mercurating, Mercury retrograding back into Capricorn for two months and then it will stay, Pluto will stay in Aquarius for the next 20 years. So there's going to be a surge in your creativity. There's going to be a surge in your, um, you know, maybe even your romanticism, how charming you are, how uh, affable you are, right? How things just kind of come to you naturally and fluidly. Now with the moon here, you might also be confronting a lot of uh, shadow work, right? You might be confronting the, the shadow side of your um, personality and the light side of your personality, right? So the sun sign and the moon signs, right? What is your sun sign? What is your moon sign? Maybe focus more on your moon sign and how you can kind of integrate that into uh, your lifestyle. Integrate your emotions. Some of you all might like to, you know, might be heavy on the drinking, you know, just because you like the way it makes you feel or whatever. Um, but I feel like spirit is saying, you know, everything in moderation, all things in moderation. Okay. So with the star card, I feel like a lot of wishes with the star card and the nine of cups, the nine of water here, there's going to be wishes granted. Now, these could have been um, seeds planted a long time ago, right? With the 10 of earth the uh, or the 10 of pentacles, right? But I feel like you're, you're destined for greatness, pile number twos. A lot of you all are very lucky people. A lot of you are very blessed. A lot of you all have a lot of blessings coming up that I've almost been kind of like backdated or something like that. And they're going to just be coming in all at once. Um, now with the 10 of earth, I feel like there's going to be a lot of longevity. Maybe even some of you, okay, take this with a grain of salt. If it resonates, it resonates. Maybe even some of you with the star card and the 10 of earth might find fame. You know what I'm saying? In a very indirect way or a very roundabout way, in a way you least expected it, right? And this could be through your art forms, through your artwork. Like what do you do for your creativity? What do you do to display your art? Are you a painter? Are you a singer? Are you a writer? Are you a 
a filmmaker like what do you do to portray your art to the world and you know i feel like spirit says if you really take this leap of faith and actually put your work out into the ethers out out there right people will receive it very well and this would probably change your life transform your life right for the better um now with the sovereignty of water being the king of cups we have this person here and they're they're watering their liberties right they're watering their this desolate land right and they feel good in their skin and they know that they're okay you know with this watering can they're they know that everything's going to be okay that everything is you know peachy keen so to speak right um they love they approve themselves and they know that you know without a shadow of a doubt they're going they're good you know and then with this nine of cups here with nine of water again more emotional satiation more emotional fulfillment and more emotional grounding right having being satisfied being satisfied with life and it's kind of like finally now the only thing is while you're living high on the proverbial hog right you have to be very conscientious of how you guys are showcasing your wealth, your power, your your new found status, your newfound fame, because how you guys got there, maybe it's because you're blessed, maybe it's because you're lucky, yada, yada, yada. Maybe it's taking other people, maybe it seems like there is unfair balance or equities or liberties being produced here, and maybe this could be around friendships, right? I think this five of air card is very, it's a very deep card because it speaks about a time in, I know, American history and in the history of a lot of the world um, where certain people got access to certain liberties, certain um, resources and other peoples were left by the wayside. And till this day, that's still a thing that happens, right? So I feel like the five of air, the five of swords in this deck really questions integrity and really questions how we go about obtaining or, uh, yeah, obtaining our wealth, obtaining certain resources. And is that fair? You know what I'm saying? I know life isn't necessarily fair all the time, but is it just like, can you sleep at night knowing, um, it, almost like not having what you have. Cause to me, that's just, you know, knowing, can you go to sleep at night knowing that you've done the best you could for everyone involved for all for humanity. And I'm not speaking about every single person on the planet. Cause that's impossible, but the people around you, your family, your friends, your community, right? The people in your proximity, how can you do more to help and not harm? Right. And then we have the three of cups, which this could be about certain friendships, right? Certain wanting to win at all costs, maybe just to prove a point, but not even feeling satiated or feeling like, okay, I made a, I made a move out of integrity. Like I, I could sleep at night or so, something like that, right? With the five air, you have to be very conscientious of how you're saying things, what you're saying, because they make an impact is what I'm trying to say about number twos. Okay. But Ultimately, this is a beautiful reading, and I feel like a lot of um, the things that you have asked spirit for, you've asked the universe for, you've put out with your intentions are coming to fruition. But sometimes you have to, excuse me, make sure you're very specific in regards to these things that you're asking for because, um, you know, the old age saying, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. But sometimes we don't know who we're impacting, you know? who's at the other end of that so let's see tell us more spirit one last card in regards to how this pluto in aquarius will be affecting the lives of our pile number twos what will this pluto in aquarius bring into the lives of pile number two spirit one card okay <laughs> we have gemini with rescue that's so funny because the whole time off camera before I started any to pull any cards when I was um, cleansing the deck, this card kept popping out. 
So we have card number three, Constellation Gemini with Rescue. Okay. I'm going to read to you guys out of the guidebook more about this. But I also feel the energy of the last readings, how your angels and guides contact you uh, emanating from this reading. So I feel like some of you already, some of you guys already may have been tipped off about some stuff, some energies coming in uh, because of this Pluto in Aquarius and you might not even have known like why you were feeling the way you were feeling why you're getting certain signs synchronicities things of that nature but now you do so let's see it says card number three Gemini rescue it says you cannot save everyone especially if they do not wish to be saved ask permission when giving advice you have no right to control others act out of true compassion, not pity. Keep your own focus. Do not covet what others have. Real rescue in times of crisis is one of the highest deeds of humanity. Real rescue in times of crisis is one of the highest deeds of humanity. And that's what even the five of air and the three of water, what I was suggesting earlier was implying like, okay, act as a conduit of spirit uh, to help the overarching you know, um, to help humanity in an overarching way, right? Being a good person, being a good citizen, contributing to your community, contributing to the people around you. Of course, you can't save everyone, but as long as you are operating in a space of integrity, then you're doing your civic duty. You're doing your due diligence, right? So that's what I'm getting here, especially with this Gemini energy. Gemini in the tarot is a card of the lover, and they may want to save everyone. They may want to help so many people but in reality um we can't save everyone you know what i'm saying sometimes the best thing to do is to focus and to cultivate our own garden as in the words of voltaire and then that reverberates it gives other people like hey let me you know tend to my family tend to my needs and once everyone is tending to their collective to their people to their surroundings then the world becomes a better place right so yeah, pile number twos. Let's get some charms to end the reading. Last charms. Oh my god, there's an astro dice in here. I don't know why it's in here, but I'm actually gonna just have it and roll it with some of the charms that I pick. Uh, last messages for our pile number twos. Any last messages you want pile number twos to know about this Pluto in Aquarius and what it will bring into their lives? What is that? Give me a second. Let me see what this this um planet is, guys. We'll, we'll get to that. So we have a teddy bear, so cute. You this reminds me of comfort of the heart of something warm and snuggly, right? Um, comfort. We have a dragonfly, okay? Some of you all might be seeing a lot of dragonflies. We have a key. We have a, a cross with a heart in it. We have tennis. Some of you guys might be taking up a, a sport or you might be playing tennis like a proverbial back and forth with someone or something. We have an elephant, so you're very wise. There's a lot of wisdom being bestowed here. We have the turtle and i'm getting the tortoise and the hare so you know take your time and in, in doing what you need to do uh we have the om sign some of you all could resonate with the om sign or peace and tranquility meditation affirmations you know spirituality um there's a lot of spiritual totems so we have the cross here so you know jesus could be a huge component in your life we have made with love okay so you could be falling in love you could be really taking your time to make something with love maybe your art okay is made with love we have this little mouse they look very friendly and docile and sweet right we have this christmas tree so pine energy as well you could be getting some big gifts um during christmas and then we have this hamsa so we have a lot of spiritual totems okay okay and then this sign let's see what is this it's pluto guys <laughs> um, you know and it says pluto the crescent of the so the crescent of soul hovers above the cross of matter 
surmounted by the spirit symbolizing the descent of spirit through the soul into the matter in the unconscious mind experiencing the fire of transformation it says rules dignity scorpio detriment is taurus okay so the key words with pluto is power abuse birth death rebirth regeneration elimination taboo pollution transmutation subversion obsession compulsion the unconscious mind decay dictator orgasm religious conver conversation Whew, and psychoanalysis okay so yes pile number two is very beautiful very deep reading i love you all so much my dreamy dreamers i really hope this reading resonated if it did please hit that thumbs up button like share and subscribe share this content with loved ones family friends or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today if you all are interested in a gorgeous one-of-a-kind tarot journal look no further remember this transit will be taking place on january 20th so you could actually use the tarot journals provided here uh with these readings with any other readings even astrological readings you guys might want to pull some cards on you guys can jot them down and journal them so again if you're interested look no further <laughs> the journal will be in the description box down below also if you're interested in booking a one-on-one -on -one consultation call with me in order to monetize your spiritually based business here on youtube i monetize my youtube channel in six weeks and i could help you do the same okay so if you're interested in doing that please go to my website uh, www.crazydreamer.com which is in the description box down below and go book a consultation call with me okay guys i love you so much and i'll see you in your next reading Bye. hey pile number threes welcome to your reading so you all chose this verisite crystal alongside card number 52 with the void of course moon missing for your reading on what you can expect this Pluto in Aquarius transit to bring into your life. So with this Verisite energy, uh, Verisite is a stone of encouragement and really brings in good energy to you, especially if you've been facing like, you know, um, you know, hard times or, you know, maybe uh, health dealings, right? So to speak, it evens it, it, it evens out the disparate, the disparages, disparages, of whatever it is that you have been missing and you have been lacking. So for the most part, pile number threes, I really feel like a lot of what you you guys have felt has been lacking, whether that has been in energy, health, wealth, whatever, is coming back in for you, right? Um, with card number 52, five and two, that is seven. So there could be like a divine reckoning here for you as well. I do want to make sure that I pinpoint the Verisite a stone for you. It says Verisite is a stone of encouragement, okay? And it says bringing hope and courage. It is extremely useful for illness and invalids. I don't know what invalids are, um, but yeah, it says also Verisite is extremely helpful for past life exploration. It facilitates visual image images of the experience while going deeply into the feelings and experiences of appropriate lives. It stimulates insight into the cause of uh, patterns that have been carried over and aids reframing situations to bring about healing. So it's a healing stone that offers encouragement and um, just overall courage into your journey. And I feel like a, for a lot of us, me included, that's what we've been missing is just we just want to continue to remain encouraged on our path because we all need that, right? So yeah, I'm going to put your stone over here and we're going to really get into the depths. Also, um, yeah, we're going to really get into the depths of your reading. So let's begin. I think this was the only deck I forgot to cleanse off camera. So I'm going to do it now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing pile number three's deck, for giving them clear, concise, accurate messages, for blessing them and keeping them protected, and giving them clear, concise, accurate messages into what this pluto in aquarius transit will be bringing into their lives spirit what will this pluto in aquarius transit be bringing into the lives of our pile number three it's very beautiful we have kada pavonis with the peacock's tail that's beautiful 
And it's interesting because I have a peacock feather right here. It's giving Oshun energy, right? Because Oshun, like, that's one of her totems, I think, too, is a peacock. But also with the peacock's tail, it's like something's blossoming, something's blooming, and it could be you before your eyes. And I think it's interesting that this peacock's tail is rainbow color because whenever I think of Aquarius, I think of rainbows. So... I know they have some sort of affiliation or association. Um, you guys could Google it. I'll try to remember to leave some resources down in the description box below where you guys' timestamps are. But in essence, I know that rainbows really incorporates humani humanity, right? Humanitary, humanity and <laughs> Aquarius is really uh, double down on humanitarianism and really uh, advocating for everyone and rights and fluidity, you know? So let's get some more. Let's get at least two more cards, Spirit. What is Pluto and Aquarius bringing into our pile number three's lives? What is Pluto and Aquarius bringing into our pile number three's lives, Spirit? Clear, concise, accurate messages beautiful you know what we're just going to take these two because i feel like these are short and sweet messages for you pile number three so let's see we have lead very interesting so yeah turning something that wasn't great turning a base situation a foundation into something beautiful and beckoning uh with the peacock's tail we go from black and white no color at all devoid of color right the void and then just no color and then we have this beautiful rainbow like how much of a story is that how articulate how you know what else can you say like a picture is worth a thousand words so this is worth a thousand words you're turning nothing something that's drab and just basic into something that's beautiful and blossoming and just says it all right so let's get into this alchemy book because i'm curious about the peacock's tail because we all know the story of lead it's the fun it's why people practice alchemy is to turn something base basic into gold right is to turn base metal into gold and turn a bad situation into a better one okay sorry let me get my One ninety nine. Yep. Wow. That's crazy. This is exactly what I said. So it says called up Pavanis, the peacock's tail, full vision, the spectrum, and inclusivity. Yeah. It says the peacock's tail is a sacred image in alchemy. The mesmerizing display of tail feathers opens to mark the alchemist having shifted from single to multi perspective this is a great achievement the alchemist has opened a thousand sets of eyes inside of one they've discarded black and white thinking that is so trippy they've discarded black and white thinking um and allowed the full spectrum of colors nuances and solutions to come into the fold creative solutions to complex social and political polarities can be found in this sacred space this is trippy because this is basically what the this is basically what the scope of this next 20 years is going to look like in pluto and aquarius shaking shit up pile number three shaking shit up seeing the whole scope seeing the whole picture inclusive not allowing uh certain structures and things to continue to um punch down so to speak right bringing people up bringing the nuances of life and humanity into full scope it's crazy especially socially and political that's like aquarius's middle name so it says the force field of possibilities has opened and the alchemist has entered a new paradigm belonging to most multiplicity dimension dimensionality and inclusion utilize this perspective for positive change while it lasts when falling back into black and white thinking, as any alchemist will do, envision the splendor of the peacock's tail. Each feather contains a shimmering 
universe of possibility. It says, go deeper, watch the movie Wizard of Oz to ponder a thousand eyes. Very interesting. So whew, it says, notice the palette of the cards. Are they black and white or leaning towards a certain color? See, this is it's just so interesting. So I feel like you guys are healing. Ultimately, you guys are whatever is missing will be put back into its place for you pile number um pile number threes and it's interesting because you guys have the least amount of these cards but it basically told the whole scope of the picture right so tell us more spirit give us more in-depth detail on this pluto and aquarius transit and what it will be bringing into the lives of our pile number threes okay i'm gonna take these cards actually so let's see. So we have the nine of fire, which is the wounded warrior, which is keep going, keep persevering, keep moving forward. You know, there may be wounds that still need to be healed, but they are being healed. And, um, you know, the nine of fire, the nine of wands represents healing. You're being healed right now. Pile number um, three. So embrace it. Some of you all could be Sagittariuses as well or have Sagittarius energy highly aspected in your chart. We have the Eight of Fire. This could be coming in quick. In the next few months, you might feel healed. You might feel renewed. You know, your spirits might be um, back into alignment and you could feel very spirited as well. We have the Curiosity of Earth, which is a page of pentacles, right? You guys are feeling um, young and spry and like you might want to learn more, go back to school. You guys might be planting more seeds for success. You guys um, might be in an apprenticeship mode. So a lot of you all could be really delving into learning about cultivating uh, from the lack, right? We have the Seven of Water, which is the Seven of Cups. We could... Uh, oftentimes signify confusion or just a, a multitude of options, right? But it could also stand for um, dreams, right? Maybe you might be having vivid dreams. Maybe certain dreams are being fulfilled during this time too. Um, this could also, I know the Seven of Cups in the traditional right away tarot, not in its original context, but in like uh, a lot of ways signify the internet too, just in regards to different portals of reality, we can like pick and choose because of the internet, right? And then we have the six of water, which is the six of cups. So, you know, what's interesting to me, we have the nine of fire and the eight of fire, and then we have the seven of water and the six of cups. And I feel like what's really going on here, there's this momentum being brought forth into your life pile number threes, and it's a healing momentum, right? And I feel like the healing is going to feel like it came in quick, right? So it might feel like overnight, you might feel like, wow, I, I feel so renewed. I feel so refreshed. I feel so vibrant. I feel like I'm actually seeing clear more than I have been in quite some time, right? I was in this uh, state of confusion. I just seen 1111 on the um, time clock too. I was in the state of a state of confusion with this seven of water here. Things were very, I, I felt like, you know, things were very veiled or I couldn't really see through the, the smoke and mirrors of things, right? And I feel like you're going to feel like you did when you were a child during simpler times when things were maybe seemed easier, you know? So let's pull... I think I'm, let's pull one more card. Tell us one more card. Give us one more card, Spirit, for pile number threes. Because I think I'm going to pull more um, oracle cards after this pile number threes. Give us more insight into this Pluto and Aquarius transit and what it's bringing for our pile number threes. I feel like this card wants to come out. Ten of fire. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the overwhelm is done. I feel like the worst is behind you, pile number threes. I feel like you guys have carried a, a huge burden. And I feel like now you're going to be able to juggle work and play very uh, efficiently, very effortlessly, right? Um, and I feel like there is this duality energy here as well. You guys will be confronting the duality of your nature, of your shadow self, right? Of what you feel that might be missing, but... I feel like because you are going to experience this almost like what seems like an overnight shift or an overnight healing, uh, it won't seem as much of a task to do, right? So let's see. 
let's pull some more cards. Tell us more, Spirit. Give us more in-depth detail on what Pluto and Aquarius will be bringing into our pile number three's life. Clear, concise, accurate messages. What will Pluto and Aquarius be bringing into our pile number three's life, Spirit? <sighs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I like this. Okay, so we have card number 44, the bright star with canopus and guidance. So there's going to be a lot of guidance and insight on your journey, on your path. You guys are going to know what to do. And your, and your um, path will be lit, right? We have card number one, the constellation Aries with motivation. Some of you all might be Aries. Others of you might be um, just very motivated, very spry. Like I said, like have this whole new lease on life because you feel so like almost like an overnight renewal, right? This overnight renewal of your mind, body, and spirit. So it's almost like the guidance is carrying you. That bright star is carrying you towards... Um, the things that you want, you know? And I know it's interesting because North, the overall North node is in Aries right now. And um, I feel like a lot of you all could be seeing how this is uh, playing out, right? And you all could be questioning your motivations, right? What motivates you? What lights you up? Why do you still want to do certain things that you said you wanted to do? If you still want to do certain things that you said you wanted to do. We have at the bottom of the deck, card number 37 with the nebula helix, eye of God protection. Okay, so you're very protected during this time. You're very um, grounded during this time and spirit is, is the spirit has you. Okay. So now let's see. All right. Pi see, pile number um, threes, you guys were a shorter reading. I just feel like you guys' message was very short, sweet, and to the point. But let's see. Let's get some charms to really end off your reading here. Tell us more, Spirit. Last messages for our pile number threes. Last messages you want them to know about this Pluto and Aquarius and what it is bringing into their lives. Okay, so very interesting. You guys got quite a few charms, so bear with me. You have a key here. So I feel like you guys have the key to unlock any success that you are asking for that you have been wanting, right? Again, we have this heart with this nurse's cap on it, which signifies healing, okay? You are healing and you are a healer, okay? But sometimes even mo every time, okay? Even our healers need healing, okay? Again, that grounded, that anchor, that protection that spirit is offering to you during this time. I feel like a lot of you all will feel very grounded and anchored uh, during this. Oh, we have two anchors. There could be travel or you guys could like really um, establish a home base or something like that is what I'm getting as well. We have a crown energy so there could be this type of royalty you could be really understanding your your royal the royal you or uh your crown chakra could really be opening and expanding during this time pile number threes this looks like a spur from a cowboy boot but i don't know what this is this could just be a star or a sun i don't know what this is but it looks like a spur from a cowboy boot Again, we have the signifier of protection here with this cross with these angel wings on it. Very protected. Spirit has you. I think we had, I don't know if this is an um sign, but it's like an ancient symbol of protection and a religious totem. We have this little baby angel on this moon. That could be significant in some way, shape, or form. We have the Taj Mahal. Again, um, there could be like somewhere you're traveling. You could be traveling to India, okay? We also have this conch shell, I think, or this hermit shell. And then we have this cross again. Some of you all might have ties into Christianity or Buddhism or um, what is it? Hinduism, okay, 
but there's there's religious protection here for you. There there's spiritual protection here for you. Excuse me. And so now let's get a roll of the astro dice for one last message for our pile number threes during this Pluto and retrograde and what it could be bringing into our pile number three's life. We have Libra, we have the third house, and then we have Venus. So some of you all could have your Venus is in Libra, which means like uh, with the third house, what is the third house? Creativity, yeah. You guys could be feeling very creative in a state of balance, right? Very anchored. Um, I feel like maybe you could be doing creative work with a partner or wanting to do creative work with a partner because we have Venus and Libra here, which would signify to me like partnership, but like romantic partnership and a balance and like really wanting to hone in, in on your creativity, maybe with said partner, right? So yeah, pile number three is beautiful reading. I'm so happy and blessed that I was able to read for you all. Um, I really hope this message resonated in some way, shape or form. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button, like, share and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. If you all are interested in a gorgeous one of a kind tarot journal, look no further. The link to that journal will be in the description box down below. Also, if you all are interested in booking a one on one spiritually based business consultation call with me to see how you can monetize a platform like YouTube in six weeks. <laughs> look no further go to my website and go book a consultation call with me i monetized my youtube channel in six weeks literally like a year and a half ago and it's completely changed my life so uh if you guys are interested in that go book a consultation call with me and i'll be looking forward to hearing from you all so i love you so much and until next time i'll see you in your next reading bye